go. I'd like to describe my reasoning behind uh, the choice to disassemble this uh, circa 1900 stickly chair. I'm going to move the chair frame back and forth where you, where you can see how rickety it's become. It is, um, the upholstery has been lifted from it and, um, uh, and so it's no longer encumbering the frame. The, the chair was originally a mortise and tenon uh, construction and, uh, and the mortise and tenons are also pinned. So I'm going to pull up a, a leg for you to see the, um, the mortise as you come in closer. Hopefully you can catch this. The walls are really precise. They left, they left a, uh, a coved section on each end of the, uh, the mortise that allows a little bit of room for the tenon to move within it. And then there's a pin, it was a mortise that was drilled directly through the surface of the, um, of the leg, and a little dowel pin was created and it installs thusly. The other part of the component is, of course, the tenon. And that tenon, you can see the bore hole through the tenon, and that's where that pin comes through. And it hooks everything together. Now these joints were glued with hide glue, but the glue failed over time, both from expansion and contraction and wear, and, and the, the mortises did bruise slightly. So we're going to take care of some of that gap problem during the uh, re-glue phase by uh, adding some shims into it. And of course we'll have to recreate the uh, dowels precisely and uh, the, the dowel pins and then pop those back in and do some finishing work to uh, make sure that the cosmetic is cosmetically uh, integrated with the rest of the, uh, the piece. So this chair will be basically reduced to what I'm seeing here on the left? That's right. So I've reduced the chair to, to sticks and you can see all the components from the stretchers down below, stretchers, the apron, seat apron, the corner blocks that fit into the chair. Will you pick a corner block up so we can see it? And a nice little butterfly shaped or horn shaped corner blocks that fit into the corners of the seat and uh, integrate the two the two sides of the um, <clears throat> of the um, seat apron and <clears throat> act as a fail safe to keep this chair from from uh, slipping apart over time. Now I, I chose to not disassemble the back frame. First, the pins are not as long going into these, these splats. Um, and they have patina. The chair doesn't flex much in the inside back. And so the choice was made to not take this apart because more damage could be done to, to these back splats by trying to disassemble. It may even uh, fracture them. So, so there's talking, always a risk. There is a risk in yeah. disassembly. So my choice was to not do that and rely upon the corner blocks when they're reinstalled to act as the structural member that will hold this back together. The primary flex in the chair is forward backwards and so I'm really confident that, that the repairs that we make today will do the trick. Three of the chairs are arm chairs, are armless chairs, and that makes it a bit more simple in the excavation. This chair, having being an arm, has a through tenon in the top, so that makes it a little bit dicey, as well as the connection between the back style and the arm. So this arm does have to come off, which means that I will have to drill out the pegs that hold it into the arm, and that will have to be precise. And then when the arm comes off, it's going to 
just slip right up over the top of this decorative tenon, off of it. And there's gap in that. I will not rely solely upon the pin and glue connection to fill that gap. Uh, I will be taking some veneer, very, very thin veneer, and soaking it in warm hide glue to where it becomes more like mucilage, really, and slip it over the top of the tenon, and that will act as my, my shim, and I'll end up with good adhesion. So the next step, we'll see this chair completely disassembled. And there's one other thing, that, and I, you can come in close just one more time. You'll be able to see the repairs that have been made on the holes from upholstery. All the tack holes are filled with pins. I have taken warm high glue and a hypodermic needle and set glue into each of those little holes. I just popped a little hardwood pin into each and then leveled it. And it's a far superior way of repairing upholstered objects than trying to drop epoxies which are not reversible, or um, and, and do shatter when when tacks hit them again, or any type of composite. They just none of those really work effectively. It's always better to set wood in, uh, even though we're looking at just ingrain dropping in, and it's not as as strong as it originally was. But we will be able to just feel along the edge. I let the the pin stay just a little bit proud, so that when it, I'm reupholstering, I'll be able to feel those feel those little nodules and go back into those original holes. It's really a, a, a great way to restore upholstered objects, and uh, you'll be able to see that further in the uh, upholstery phase. So I think that's about it for now. Next next step is to uh, take out the corner blocks and to drill out the the um, dowel pins, and then you'll be able to see this piece um, reduced to its components.